So good morning, everyone. And uh, we're starting this virtual meeting um, about the memorandum of understanding between the Ministry for the Family, Children's Rights and Social Solidarity and University of Malta on the Gemma Financial Capability Gamification Prototype Design. So um, thank you all for joining us. And I would like to, win to introduce Minister Michael Falzon to make his introductory comments. Good morning, Kulhat, English. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us at a distance yet. We are still here. Um, the Gemma program is aimed mainly at sustaining financial solidarity and moving for any fees, whatever, any extra or any expenses or anything comes up. I think I've said enough as a beginning thing. You can take it now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. So um, I would like now to introduce the rector at the University of Malta, Professor Alfred J. Vella. Good morning, Minister. Good morning, Good morning. all. Um, yes, I think this this project is 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 interesting because it, if I understood correctly, it is intended to to teach young people while um, still at school um, uh, how to deal with money. Um, if I understood correctly, um, and I hope that's what financial capability um, is supposed to to imply. Uh, I've I've had personal um, contacts in my past um, professional life as a as a fire investigator, which brought me into um, situations that exist in this country, as in others, of course, where people suffer burnt. Um, uh, residences because they uh, end up in, in deep financial uh, trouble due to debts that they cannot sustain. And of course, these will be debts incurred via means which are probably not uh, regular. But uh, yes, out of desperation, people do desperate things and then they suffer terrible consequences. Um, perhaps that's an extreme situation um, that very few of us will ever have to um, touch with or, or God forbid, experience. But I think um, if, if, if um, there is this device, this tool, which our IT students are currently working upon in order to device so that our young generations um, are ne never have to face um, these situations, then I'm very pleased for several reasons, um, and not just one. Um, of course, one of the reasons is that this is another way of promoting, um, well, um, let's say student research, which is, which is important. Um, because when they are working on a project, our IT students are in effect um, not uh, showing what they know, but actually um, uh, going beyond that and uh, trying to devise uh, new new things, um, uh, which are supposed to be uh, useful for another category of students, the uh, the younger set. So, um, well, the older set of students learn. They learn the techniques of, of research. They learn the, the techniques of um, actually taking forward what uh, already exists. Um, and their products will also serve to educate um, their colleagues in schools. So um, I, I appreciate what the ministry is, is doing. Uh, Minister, Mr. Mark Musu, thank you very much for giving us this um, opportunity to uh, have our students, um, um, you know, do more um, thanks also to the financial support 
that um, is being provided. Thank you. Thank you so much to Professor Vella. I now introduce the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry for the Family, Mr. Mark Musu. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. An important uh, recommendation of the 2015 strategic review was the need to set a strategy for financial literacy. Acting on this recommendation, a draft strategy was drawn up between the ministries for education, finance, and this ministry as well, which was published uh, for consultation in 2016 and the final version issued in uh, January 2017. The responsibility for the implementation of the strategy uh, rests with my office. I am pleased to say that since early 2017, the platform for financial capability education, today branded as Gemma, has come a long way with its public face being gemma.gov.mt. The strategy had set up three strategic trusts trusted independent information, education pathways, and work with stakeholders. Today's session, in fact, is about the second and third strategic trusts. In terms of education, many initiatives are underway with the Ministry for Education, such as interactive education videos for primary students, um, post a competition for primary to junior secondary students, quits for senior secondary, uh, financial capability as a life skill for senior secondary, and the introduction of a level three financial literacy program designed with and offered by MCAST. One of the issues faced was the absence of financial capability gamification. Much research was done on financial capability gamification overseas with an object to identify such e-games for Malta, but attempts to do so failed, given that the financial capability setting was unique to the specific country, whether the UK, the USA, or say Australia. My ministry built a positive relationship with Dr. Azzopardi and Dr. Labella from the Department of AI, who representing uh, the university, worked with us on the creation of My Gemma Budget Planner. Late in summer last year, we approached Dr. Zatsopardi and Abela to see whether they would be interested in introducing an assignment that would um, ultimately lead to a financial capability concept designed by students. My ministry stated that if the interest exists, then the relationship would be on a basis of a strategic partnership and that the ministry would finance prices for the best concepts designed. And seven months later, I am pleased to see today the financial capability gamification design concepts produced by the students and to formally launch the Memorandum of Understanding on the strategic partnership with the University of Malta. This brings me to the third strategic trust I mentioned earlier, strategic partnerships. At the outset, the strategy underlined that um, implementation should be coordinated and achieved by working through networks. Gemma today, in fact, is a sustained and respected organization. I am pleased to say that we are closing discussions with a number of potential partners including the General Workers Union, MSB Life, and BOV, amongst others. The strategic partnership with the University of Malta, however, is the first one to be signed and publicly communicated, and thus holds pride of place. I thank the Director for his vision with regards to the strategic partnership with the Ministry on Financial Capability, e-gamification, I think I thank the students for their work and Dr. Zatsopardi and Dabela for their leadership. And now, without further ado, let's get to the heart of us being together today. 
students in your good hands. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Musu. Um, now I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Abela so he can uh, guide the students to present their work, please. Thanks, Claudia. Good morning, everyone. So the first presentation will be delivered by the team, uh, the Dream Team, composed of Valeria and Chantel. And I invite uh, the Dream Team to um, introduce themselves. Hi. Good morning. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Valeria Halamiova, and I did the artwork and some of the programming and the creation of Money Monsters. Our game is targeted at teaching kids budgeting skills and financial capability in a creative and fun manner, as you will see in our video. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm, I'm Chantal, and I'm also part of the Dream Team, and I mainly took part um, in doing the programming of the game. So we can see the video now, please. <laughs> Thank you. The main aim of this project is for children to gather an understanding of financial responsibility. We believe that gaining such knowledge at an early age is beneficial as this knowledge will be carried with them for the rest of their lives. We'd also like to highlight the long-term effects that some of the decisions that they will be making at an early stage in their lives could impact the course of one's life. Throughout this game, we'll also be introducing concepts of social security benefits such as pensions and the need for daily budgeting. We'll also be discussing other important terms such as taxes and the children allowance. As a solution to this problem, we have created the game on the monsters, which makes use of the character of Nugget, which can be seen there on the screen. We'll be taking into account the health and the happiness and the money and the energy as highlighted on the screen. The environment is interactable, as you one can see, the door, the sofa and the television are interactable, and whatever interactable object there will be a decision prompt. At the bottom of the screen, we can see the user interface, which incorporates the inventory, the store, the hardware store, the phone, the information, and the settings. At the top right of the screen, we can see the age as the monster will be getting older with every passing day. The game is based on a life simulation and therefore we'll be seeing events that highlight one's life incorporated into this game. The first decision that the monster will get to make is whether he would like to further his education or not. Furthering his education will increase the probability of getting a better job. As we said before, the environment is interactive with the fork. Clicking on the object in the environment will enable the monster to interact with the environment. This will be achieved at the expense of energy. There's also events that are incorporated into the game, and therefore the monster can actually get bonuses, promotions, and we also can get fired. In the case that he gets fired, he can again get a new job. This game incorporates unique artwork with the children's taste in mind, therefore we will make it more interesting for the children. The game incorporates a store, which is actually divided into three different sections, which are vehicles, entertainment, and food. Playing these will have an effect on the health and happiness of the monster. Some will provide health and some will provide happiness, some provide energy and some will actually decrease the health, the happiness and the energy. Select all that is required from the store, they will go to the bill where one can actually edit, cancel or actually pay the bill. The items that will be bought will go to the inventory which is once again divided into three different sections where are the vehicles, the entertainment and the food. In the inventory, and the monster can be able to actually use or actually sell the items that is in the inventory. The user can change their monster's home by clicking on the construction store, which brings up the following UI. There are three possible houses the user can buy upfront or pay for by year. Upon selecting another house, the backgrounds of the room change. The user can also choose to add a children's room to their house, which is a necessary requirement if they'd like to adopt future monsters. We have included a mini menu in the game where the user can change game settings whilst playing. Players are able to build the family for Nugget. Once you meet Raisin, she'll occasionally visit your house. 
You are then provided with the option to marry Raisin and she will permanently reside at your home. After purchasing a child's room, the player is given the choice to adopt up to two monsters from the options listed on the phone. The monsters will then appear in the kid's bedroom after being adopted. The game is targeted to teach children budgeting and financial skills and concepts. Players can open the guidebook for budgeting advice or simple explanations on certain financial concepts such as income tax, as well as any unclear game concepts. When Nugget chooses the sleep option, the user will be presented with an overview of the yearly income gains and expenses. The balance will indicate the amount of money Nugget gains in the year. These values can be changed depending on family relations, housing costs, and whether the user has went to work the previous year. Example of the yearly overview of Nugget when having two kids. The costing show the amount of money needed to provide for the children. On the other hand, the allowance is the adoption bonus given by the government. When Nugget hits age 60, he retires and the following UI appears showing the performance of the player throughout the game. The player's performance is evaluated based on the amount of money they were able to save for their retirement plan, the type of housing they own, the amount of relations they created, and their average health and happiness. For future improvements, we plan on creating a Maltese version of the game and adding more interactions, artwork, and animations. We also plan on including more financial concepts such as implementing a bank UI where the user can deposit money, put money aside for retirement, as well as take loans. We also think adding a more interactive tutorial when starting the game would be helpful. Thanks Valeria and Chantel for your interesting presentation. Now I invite the next team, which is called um, Il Budget. And this, this team is composed of Francesca and Jake to introduce themselves. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, so our, uh, this game was worked up, up on by me and Francesca. Our game, as Dr. Abela said, is called the budget. It was inspired by the annual budget, which takes place uh, during the time of the budget. <laughs> uh, it is aimed at teenagers because it is at that age when people, when young adults, start to take interest in the political scene of our country. We wanted to mimic the budget uh, situation through teaching it through practical techniques. So having different options of different buying opportunities and their pros and their cons. We also want to introduce concepts such as loans and private pension schemes. Uh, we also have a mini game which acts as a job for the player. Uh, if we can start the video, we can present our game. So this is the main screen, the first screen of our game called Il Budget, which is very simple. It shows a start button and a logo. First, user is um, instructed on what the game is all about. So basically, it's about um, using the money you earn from your job, which is a mini game, um, which uh, we will have to make decisions on spending, saving, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera and the salary will be based on your performance in the small mini game. So you have to find a balance between work, social life, money and happiness because happiness will also be a factor in the game. And every time where you play the game, it will be like three years have passed. So you will get the salary for three years and you will have to make decisions on that. It's important that you always have some money saved up for unknown uh, expenses which you have not planned for. So you will start off with 10,025 happiness. So if, um, if we go here, you can see that there are four main menus, one for items, plans, um, 
fonts and social menu. We'll start off with the items menu and there's the clothes menu. So right now we can buy for ourselves, so we can buy basically any type of clothes. So we can just buy the money lowers, the happiness increases. So that's the that's what always happens when you buy something. It will deduct your funds and increase your happiness. There are some gadgets, um, some house appliances and vehicles which we don't have enough money yet to buy so the button is grayed out. Next we can go to plans so we have two options going out or traveling. When going out we have um, the prices for all the family so basically if in the future you have children as we will see you can in the social menu the total will be higher than 10 euro. It will be the respective total for all the family. Um, there are different dining options and activities, so you can go to the cinema and everything. And um, for traveling, it's the same thing, basically. It will go up according to your family. So then we have the funds menu. So here we can go to the bank where you can make a term deposit, which will um, you will get an output amount according to the number of years you keep your deposit in and obviously the amount you deposit. So that will increase accordingly here. And also pension schemes. So basically the pension schemes um, first, you can read more information on the Maltese pension where um, it will inform you on the maximum pension amount you can receive and uh, um, the two thirds of your usual salary. But you also have information on the private pension schemes where it tells you that you will get a 25% tax rebate for up to 500 euros per year. Now, this information is presented um in a gamified way up here where you can invest this amount and you will get a tax rebate so basically if i increase the amount per year i will get a higher tax rebate until i reach the maximum amount per year for a tax rebate so obviously the higher i go it still remains 500 if i exceed the 2000 mark so you can invest for example i will start investing the minimum amount so in the socials menu we can choose to enter a relationship once we enter a relationship we have an option to get married however we don't have enough funds for now as it will cost 20k and here we have the happiness of our significant other who also has an inventory. Now we are also able to buy items for our significant other. So there's an option to buy not for yourself, but for your significant other. So if we go back to the socials menu and go on our significant other's inventory, we can find the item we have bought for her and also um we can see that the happiness has increased um in plans we can now see that the amounts have increased according to the number of if we try to buy something for which our funds will lower significantly below a certain threshold we will get the error we some other interesting features which this game contains are the use of APIs, where we have a pricing API which configures the prices of all the items which user can buy, and the naming API which gives random names to, to the children which you can choose to have. Thanks, Francesca and Jake. Um, the next theme is rags to riches and the authors of the game are david gabriel and jake please introduce yourself and your game thank you
Hello everyone, good morning. Our team worked on a game which allows the players to work hard to maintain their health, hunger and money statuses. And we've applied this through the use of mini games. We included a number of mini games within the game itself. And as well through other financial gamified concepts. So I myself worked on the mini games and David worked on the backend logic, whilst Jacob worked on the animations and art. So if we could start the video, please. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rex to Riches. So initially, the game starts with the main panel. And in the main panel, we have four kinds of statuses, right? The A status increments by itself, and the other three statuses have to be managed by the player. For the second panel, we have the wallet, and the player has to control their split rate. So they can manage the retirement fund, right? As well as the, the player can calculate their income tax and obviously pay it. So for the hunger panel, we have uh, five kinds of food, and we've tried, we've tried to include realistic prices. So the player can decide to buy, for example, pasta tea. And as you can see, the health decreases and the hunger increases, right? So if the health or hunger reach a level of zero, the player would lose the game. Then we have the store panel, and for the store panel, we've only included three items for prototyping. We've tried to make the prices realistic as well. And depending on what item you buy, that will increase your experience level. We will discuss the experience level later on in the other two panels. So then we have the education panel, right? And the player has the option to learn any kind of subject they want. They would obviously require to have the funds for that. And depending on which subject you learn, that will open up new doors in the jobs panel. So if I decide to learn business, for example, the online business job would be available for the, for the player. So right now we haven't bought the business, so online business is still unavailable. Then we have included five jobs, and uh, we have created a mini game for the cooking job, pizza delivery, and construction. Simply for prototyping, of course, and later on in the future, we may increase the number of mini games depending on how jobs, on how many jobs we include. So. The idea behind the minigame is that we want to teach the player to work hard for a particular score, right? And the score will be reflected in the minus status. So if the player plays well in the cooking game, right, they will have, they will earn a particular score and the score will be multiplied by five and the result will be shown in the money, in the money section. So for the cooking game, we've created a fruit slicing game, right? As you can see, uh, we have a timer over here. That is because we want to reflect real life scenarios where a person may only work for a limited amount of time, say for example, eight hours a day. So that way we can manage to control uh, on how much money the player earns. For the pizza delivery game, we've included a dodging game. Later on, we can swap the blocks with cars to make it realistic. And uh, for the construction game, we've created a box stacking game. So as you can see, the score increases. Obviously, each game has a specific timer, of course. And as I said, later on, we may include a number of other mini games. The game is obviously playable on right now on uh, on PC as well as on Android devices. So the main idea behind our game was to include the game for Android devices, and later on we may as well include another game for iPhone. So as I said before, we've really worked hard to bring out the lesson that a player has to really work 
card and play as best as possible, right? To be able to manage their three stasis and be able to prepare themselves for retirement, I guess. We also have backend logic, which takes care of deducting taxes as well. Thanks, David, Gabriel, and Jake. Now, on to our fourth presentation. The team will present, the team J, JBM will present the Life Labs game. And the team is composed of Jamie, Braden, and Mikhail. I invite the team to introduce themselves so that we can then see their video. Um, hi, because my colleague's mic isn't working. Uh, uh, I'm Mikhail. I took care of the UI and the stats of the game. Uh, Jamie. Give me a second. Game took care of character mechanics and Braden will continue. <laughs> Mikhail, we cannot hear Braden, please. Give us a second, because I think he's he got kicked out of the Zoom call or he left. Or let me just This is our game, Life Labs. Life Labs is a 2D side scroller shooter with the objective of managing resources in order to achieve major life goals. Resources are managed using orbs. Each orb increases stat while also decreases other stats. For example, by collecting the briefcase, which symbolizes working, we would increase our income while at the same time decreasing our energy and sanity. Apart from these resources, we also have enemies in the game which symbolize different obstacles in real life. For this level, we can see a black fish which moves in a combined predictable manner. This symbolizes a distraction. Also, we can see a green blob which moves erratically and slowly damages the player. This symbolizes sickness. The player must therefore deal with these enemies while also collecting the right type of orbs, depending on their goals. The different resources can be seen at the top left above the player's health bar. Depending on the orbs he collects, he would change the different resources. In order, the resources are income, knowledge, energy, sanity, and health. At the end of each round, the boss level follows. Each boss represents an important life goal. It is followed by a major life decision. In this case, the boss is an owl. An owl typically symbolizes great knowledge and wisdom. This is why I found it appropriate to represent education 
and the first steps in examination of the human's life. In fact, the decision that follows the boss is related to how they will continue their education. As for the gameplay, the boss has two dynamic forms of attack. These different phases make the player more engaged into the battle and focused more on the objective. For the first part of the battle, the boss attacks the player with projectiles. For the second part, the boss will charge and dash towards the player, making damage on contact. After every boss fight, the player will be presented with a stat screen showing how their five resources have changed over the past level and any milestones they might have reached. Reaching these milestones will give the players perks for the rest of the playthrough, which represent the benefits of that particular resource. Following the stat screen, the player will then be given a major life decision, respective to the stage of life they're at in the playthrough and the choices they've made so far. For example, after the first level, which represents the player doing their O levels, they're presented. Thanks, Jamie, Brayden, and uh, Mikhail for their presentation. Our last presentation is the game developed by Jarheads, and the team was composed by uh, of Russell, Jesmar, and Andre. I invite the Jarheads team to introduce themselves so that we can then follow with their video. Thank you. Hi, I'm Russell. It's uh, worth saying that it's called Jarhead because it's Jar, the, the, the first initials of each of our names. Um, Jesmar, Andre, and Russell. But anyways, I'm responsible for the level and sound design for our game. I also had the pleasure of writing all the music and a majority of the sound effects. So I sincerely hope you enjoy. Andre? Um, I'm Andre. I was in charge of the game mechanics for statistics which the player would need to balance using decisions that are another game mechanic that pops up during the game. And, uh, yep. Jesmar? Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Jesmar. Uh, I was in charge of the art and animation of the game. I uh, wrote some decisions, which you will soon see, and did research in order to have somewhat realistic prices in the game. So, yeah, we can, we can play the video. Morning. This is our entry to the drama competition, Jarhead. With Jarhead, we provide our players with a cute, fun, and engaging experience. We want to motivate them to make better choices in their finances for a better future, especially after these trying times. Now, at the start of our game, we are presented with our main character, Gerard, the unisex Starlet Thief. And we have the first choice that will affect our character in the long term. Long term choices are presented by these small characters called Jarbuds. Jarbuds represent jobs that Gerard can have. In uh, this situation, we will pick three of them and see their descriptions. Out of these three, I prefer programmers, so I'll choose to be a programmer. Now, after this, we are presented with uh, another branch of uh, Jarbud decisions regarding housing, whether we want to rent it or purchase it. Expenses related to these choices will affect Jared at the end of each month. We'll pick rent in order to keep our starting capital. The exclamation mark afterwards, that's our first quick decision. These decisions will affect Gerard temporarily. For example here, by adopting the pets, they will lose money but gain sanity. Now, at the top left of the screen, there is a number that represents the amount of euros that Gerard currently has. On the right, you can see the sanity meter. This meter represents the overall happiness of the character. Simply having a lot of money does not mean that you will be happy. So Gerard must constantly balance between gaining money and maintaining joy, represented by these bars. Now, coming up is Gerard's house. If you ignore the choice of obtaining a house, then it wouldn't show up. This is just an example to simulate the determinism in our game. Now, these are, the, these are our programming colleagues. Gerard faces the decision, a decision regarding their job. Uh, in this case, a senior employee. He decided to retire early from his post, and you can choose whether to accept a promotion in his place, yes or no. 
Now, these kind of jobs will affect Gerard's sanity negatively, but it will make him more money. So it's one of the choices that really have to make the player think between bands. Now, at the end of each month, Gerard faces a boss. This boss gives him uh, his month's end, which is full of income and expenses. And uh, a new month after this is started. Now, in the future, this uh, pain, it will um, be more detailed. So it will show the, 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 the income and expenses individually rather than their collected sum. And this will educate the user to spend certain amounts in some places. Otherwise, over here we have our partner. We can choose to start a relationship with this partner. Now this shows up specifically on the second month in the demo. This can show up later in later games. But we agree to this partnership. And now this partner will continue showing up in the game with a new branch of decisions which will affect our character on long term. So now we're finishing our second month. It's the beginning of the third month. If we chose to say yes to the partner, we wouldn't get another opportunity but uh, we said yes so now when we approach the house area of this interval a new opportunity will come up in this case it's having a child so before we get there the partner prompts us we have a quick decision with the partner regarding valentine's day we can choose whether to dedicate ourselves to a relationship or not now um, here clicking on the child we can choose whether to actually decide on having a child or not, um, this will affect Gerard on the long term, just like the partner, and a new branch of decisions from the next month will take place. This is a workplace decision, and now we're approaching the months, and we're approaching the fourth month. This is our income and expenses. Now, the game ends once Gerard either loses all their money or all their sanity. In this case, they lost all their sanity by the last decision. Now he has quite a lot of money, but the sanity dropped down, so he got the game over anyways. This just shows how a constant balance is, is always required. And it teaches the player to be careful, you know? So yeah, that's our game. We hope you enjoyed our demonstration. And we wish you a pleasant day full of positive, quick decisions. Thanks to the JAR team uh, with Russell, Jasmar, and Andrea for their presentation. I now give the floor to Claudia for the rest of the, of the event. Yes, thank you, Dr. Abela. Um, and I would like also to congratulate all the students on uh, this journey because they, they, all the videos were very interesting. And um, it was also surprising that uh, the students uh, also, you have to take care of, uh, of their age, but they still thought of the future and how they have to manage their money. So this is amazing. Well done, guys. So now um, I also go back to you, Dr. Abela and Dr. Joel Azzopardi. Um, so you can also give us some information about the module design and the competition. Okay, so good morning, all. So. Uh, together with my colleague Chali, uh, we were uh, we have taken care to develop this study unit. So this study unit initially it was just a normal study unit within the degree program for the BSc ICT in AI. However, four years ago it was in 2016 when I approached Chali and told him why don't we try to make it more interesting and moreover more fun, both for us and also for uh, for the students. So the idea was this, that we are living in a startup world where most of the startups are actually in IT and most of them are actually in handling data. And in addition, we wish to have students uh, to look beyond the idea of just finding, uh, finding a job. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with after graduating you find a job, but we want them to look also there are other options out there. And one option can be uh, to do something else, to try to do your own startup. Now, this is part of 
what I think is university's overarching aim that we want to produce thinkers, not just machines. So students need to be thinkers, need to be disruptors in today's world. And in our opinion, what better way there is to be a disruptor than to be able to provide a startup that can provide service to the people out there. So essentially in the study unit, uh, we taught people how to harvest published data from the web, how to glean interesting insights from it, aggregate data sets from different, uh, from different sources to all in the purpose to have some additional value to render a value added service that can be of benefit to other users. And when we thought to have this approach of having students develop, come up with idea of develop, develop a startup. So, we provided them with the theoretical background. So Charlie and I took care to develop, uh, to teach them handling data, etc. And then we approached also, we brought also experts from both universities of Malta Stakeoff uh, Center and also from Meta's Innovation Hub. And in here, from Meta's Innovation Hub, I cannot not mention uh, Alex Borch, who was always a great help to us. So, uh, in fact, we had a number of, uh, there were times, for example, when Alex Borch actually delivered himself a session on design thinking about how to do design sprints, etc. We had people also coming to, uh, we've also brought people who had also, who were way back in the, follow the BSC ICT, the BSC IT at that time, and then took their, and then set up their own companies, such as, Johan Zami from Netrefer. And last year, actually, with the help of Alex Borch, we also brought people who are actually, who actually just won the incubation funding from, I don't know if it was from Meta Innovation Hub or from Takeoff, uh, where they were talking about their experience building the startup and they're still in the initial stages. Our idea is that the students, we are not forcing them to build a company there and then to build a startup idea, but our hope is that they, they are first of all able to come up with ideas, to think outside the box and to validate their ideas. So to validate basing, mixing their skills with, uh, with the business world. And if things get well, I mean, we also wanted them to know about the opportunities out there. For example, even the incubation, the takeoff funds award from both the universities of Malta Takeoff and Meta Innovation Hub. And if they have a good idea, they can go and present them there. In the format of this, it was that the students, they pitched their idea using a three minute lighting presentation. So we put them into groups. They have one or two weeks to, to think about something and they discuss it with us and they also brainstorm and they also look at it objectively, criticize it, etc. They need to present their ideas in a three minute lighting presentation, similarly to, similar to what is done in, uh, in these uh, takeoff awards. And then eventually after, towards the end of the semester, they need to present a working prototype of that idea. Obviously when I say a working prototype, it does not necessarily mean uh, the, full, the full thing. Okay. Um, what, I, what I wanted to say, that uh, initially students were a bit skeptical about about this uh, about this view but however we ended up having very good feedback from the students and uh, i'm sure they all had uh, had enjoyed it now i pass the floor back to my colleague charlie to to, to describe how th we went about things this year thank you joel um, good morning minister rector permanent secretary colleagues and uh, students. We've known uh, David and uh, Iris for a while, and uh, when they reached out to us to set up this collaboration, we immediately agreed, uh, as it was always one of the main aims, as Joel said, uh, behind this course, to be able to associate the students' deliverables to a real need. This is an important factor when developing innovative solutions, since from experience we know that people would use a solution if there is a need for it. This year is the fourth year that we are running this course on data mining. And every year, the students tell us that they got 
a different but very rewarding experience. The idea is to create, uh, uh, so the idea to create a game, a gamification competition uh, was immediately appealing to us. And we knew that uh, our students were able to rise to the challenge, also given uh, the fact that uh, the Department of Artificial Intelligence provides a number of courses that are directly related, uh, not to just artificial intelligence, but also to, to games and game design. Such collaborations give students the possibility to hone their skills in different areas and provide them further on with the opportunity to use the latest AI techniques and technologies while being encouraged to excel through a healthy spirit of competition. So this first phase of this initiative involved that the teams developed a first prototype. This will be developed by a second phase that will see the teams that win this first phase to continue developing and packaging their game before providing it for the general public. Furthermore, apart from the gamification competition, through this collaboration, the ministry will be sponsoring some of our students whose publications have been accepted to attend the relevant workshop or conference. We hope that this first initiative will be followed by others, possibly targeting different areas of interest for both the Ministry and the Department of Artificial Intelligence. I'd like to conclude by thanking the teams, as at the moment I know that they are hardworking on their dissertations, and to conclude, uh, and sorry, to congratulate them for the time and effort invested in creating their games. You should all be proud of your achievements, irrespective of whether you are a winner or not. You always make our university proud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Abela, and I agree with you. And I also give my, my same advice to your students because this is something very, very nice of them. And who, what, whoever the winner is, um, everyone should be encouraged to move on and continue enduring on their achievements. So now, David, I give the floor to you so you can um, say the award of prizes and then the way forward. Thank you, uh, Honourable Minister, uh, Permanent Secretary, Rector. Um, uh, it's, it has been a pleasure working with the University of Malta and the students on this assignment. Um, we believe um, from the point of financial capability that this assignment is, is of certain importance. Um, uh, when Iris and I conceived this, uh, we conceived it after months of researching potential games in the UK language, particularly um, to try and, and uh, localize for Malta. But that proved far harder than we thought. If you take the UK as a basic example, they use sterling currency, they don't use euro. So um, it's not just a matter of, of, of transposing. Um, so we were very happy when uh, Iris and I, when we approached um, uh, the Department of Artificial Intelligence, um, uh, Joel and Charlie, and uh, that we have had the opportunity to work with them um, to develop um, uh, in this phase the, a number of concepts for financial capability gamification. Now, um, the evaluation criteria that we applied um, uh, following discussion with uh, Joel and Charlie were, were six. Um, efficient, intuitive UI, user interface, feedback to the user through the game, engaging and motivating, it, that the game flows, flows well, that it is fun and interactive, and of course, that it is educational. Um, the five teams were, were uh, presented good concepts. Um, however, um, life is what it is, um, uh, and the budget is what it is, and uh, we could not um, award um, something to everybody. Um, however, um, uh, we did decide to extend the potential um, uh, migration to the, the forthcoming phase, which is this prototype, to three ideas. 
which we believe um, uh, um, uh, um, deserve to, to take that step forward. So the group that came second, to whom we are awarding 1,000 euros, is ill budget by Francesca um, Silvio and by Jake Saracino. Um, uh, on the evaluation matrix, they obtained 72 points. The second, um, uh, um, which is joint first with 83 points, is Jarhead by Russell, Samud, Jesmar, Faruja, and Andre Lewis. Jenkins, okay, to whom we are awarding 2,500 euros. And uh, jointly in first is uh, the, uh, the game Money Monsters um, by Valeria Homiova and Chantel Saliba, okay, whom we are also awarding 2,500 euros. We will be, we are, as you are aware, we asked for your IBAN numbers and we will be electronically posting uh, your prices this, this week. So congratulations to everybody, and uh, we now uh, at Gemma um, uh, look forward to the next step. The next step is the prototype, um, where we will take the um, concept designs and we'll develop them further. Um, uh, and the prototype design phase will start after you conclude your studies at university. So we are looking um, to working with you between July 2020 and December 2020. Um, uh, we have identified um, uh, the terms of reference for the prototype, which we will, uh, through Joel and uh, Charlie, bring uh, to your attention. Um, uh, and we will be working uh, very closely with you um, uh, um, in terms of making this prototype happen. For example, uh, one of the requirements we will be asking is that it is bilingual in Maltese and English, but we will assist you with the translations and the Maltese, Maltese scripting. Similarly, we are saying that the prototypes should be undergoing testing with appropriate user groups. Um, we had already discussions with a number of schools um, uh, um, in education, state education, who are also interested to having their students piloting some, uh, piloting these games. Um, so without further ado, I thank the ministry and the university for coming up with this strategic partnership. I look forward, together with Iris, to work with the, um, well, not students then, upon, upon finalizing your, your studies, um, working with the teams who have been selected to move to phase B. And I thank every one of you for participating, um, um, uh, and I wish you all well with your future steps. Thank you very much. Thank you, David, and thank you also to the students and well done to the winners. Um, I may now introduce again and give the floor to the minister so he can make his concluding remarks. Thank you. Well, first of all, a very good morning to all. It was an interesting presentation. Okay, it was a good idea. Not only to cope for the originality, but also to get team building and all that. We look forward to further uh, cooperation. We do have further cooperation with the University of Malta under different sections, if you like, or under different schools. The only thing I would like to, to make is I would like to say a very big thank you and congratulations to you all. Um, doing this, side, this type of conferences isn't exactly my, my number one um, choice, but uh, still to have managed to have a, a good a good show. On it. I would like to thank all involved, all the students, not only those who have been asked for their IBAN number, also those that have not been asked for their IBAN number. And I think uh, a very special thank you should also go to David and to Willis, who have really believed in this. We are basically talking about five, five points. We're talking about financial responsibility, financial capability, financial prior, prioritization. And I can tell you from, from a political aspect that most people do not have, well, not most people, but uh, 
greater number of people have difficulties, have no idea about prioritization, what they should spend on first. There is also the issue of private pensions. It has been dragging on, to be honest, for the last 30 years, I think, or even more. I remember that in 1990, we were already already talking about private pensions. And also, I believe we should also see how we can make make ends meet better for all those people out there. I thank you, everybody, again. Wish you a very good week. We can, another week under Corona, but uh, we have done all our best to keep going. Thank you and very well done to everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, everyone. So we've now came to conclude this meeting. And, and well done again to all the students, those who won and those who didn't, but you all did a very great job. And I can say that this meeting is now closed and wish you a good day and a good week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your assistance, Claudia. You're welcome.